Welcome to another studio time. Today I'd like to share with you our next project, creating a clay picture. I love creating clay pictures. I made my pufferfish friends out of clay for this book called Over in the Ocean in a Coral Reef. Here's where my pufferfish friends live inside this book. Oh, it was so much fun making them. And I hope you're excited about this project as well. Now I made a great big clay picture, but your project is going to be to make a tiny clay picture using clay. Now we're gonna take our time with this project and we're gonna begin by first experimenting with the clay. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Of course, to begin, you're going to need some clay. You can either purchase modeling clay or you can make your own clay. That's what I've done here. And with both options, you can have beautiful colors. I'd like to share with you how you can make your own clay. It's a lot of fun to do. In order to make your own clay, here are the ingredients you'll need. The dry ingredients are flour, table salt, and cream of tartar. The wet ingredients are water, cooking oil, and even baby oil. You'll also need some measuring cups and measuring spoons. And then you'll mix these ingredients together, working with a grown-up. You're going to stir them and cook them on a stove top. And when they have cooled, you're gonna get something so surprising. You're gonna get some clay. This is a cream color clay and it's nice and soft. To make different colors of clay, you'll need food coloring and you'll add that to your clay. Now it's time to add colors to your clay. First, you want to separate your clay and make smaller balls for each of your colors. They don't have to be the same size or you can decide to make them the same size. It's up to you. Now it's time to add the colors. I'm gonna start with blue. All right, let me take my lid off carefully here. I like to start by poking my finger inside and then putting the food coloring inside there. So I'll start with a couple drops. There we go. Let's see what happens. Start squishing it together. Let's see what kind of blue this makes. Here I go. Just going to keep going. Pinching and pulling and mixing. Isn't that beautiful? Wow. Just keep going until that blue is mixed all through that clay. Did you notice how it's changing? It started as a cream color clay. Now it is a beautiful blue. I have my blue clay. Now it's time to make some more colors. Here we go. Mix your different colors of clay. You want to add some baby oil. It'll help 
to keep the clay from drying out too quickly. So I just take a little bit, put it on my fingers, and work it into each of the colors. So I'm starting with my cream color. Just mix it in there. After you create your colorful balls of clay, you'll need to store them in a container with a lid or in a baggie to keep them from drying out. In our next part of our project, we're gonna have fun experimenting with different techniques and tools with your clay. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Welcome back, friends. Now I'd like to share with you the first technique that I would like you to practice and experiment with. You're first gonna need a small piece of cardboard, maybe three by four inches. I decided to cut out a piece of cardboard from an old tea box. Perhaps you have a tea box you can use, maybe a cereal box. Let's see what kind of boxes you have around. When we put our clay down, it's important that we put it down on this side, not the shiny side that has the printed words and pictures because our clay will not stick to that part. It'll stick better on this side. When we make our final tiny clay picture, we're even going to make that on a little piece of cardboard. So perhaps go ahead and cut out several pieces, one for your final picture and several for experimenting. Now that you've prepared your piece of cardboard, it's time for me to share with you the first technique I would like you to practice and experiment with. I would like you to select a color and then we're going to spread it and cover this piece of cardboard. Let's see, I'm gonna start with this limey green color. So I'm just gonna pinch off some of the clay and start to carefully place it down and spread it out. Now I wanna make sure it does not get too thick or too thin. So notice this, if I pull it really hard, do you notice how you can see the cardboard through there? I wanna make sure I cover all of the cardboard up very carefully. So I'm just gonna keep going. Now I finished covering my cardboard by spreading out the lime green clay. I'm ready to share with you our next technique. Mixing and blending the colors of clay together. You can experiment with whichever colors you would like. For this experiment, I would like you to just try small amounts of clay. We're not gonna mix large groups of clay together right now just small amounts. So I think I'm going to take some of my yellow clay and some of my red clay and mix them together. Are you thinking about it? Do you have a prediction about what's going to happen? All right, we're going to do an experiment and see what we discover. All right, let's see here. I'm going to do it with my fingers and mix them together. Let's watch. Here they go. Oh, I think I'm gonna remove some of that red. There it goes. Can you see what's happening? Do you recognize the color? That's right. It's creating orange. I made orange clay mixing together some of my yellow and red. Now 
now I'm going to take this color that I mixed together and I'm going to start to blend it on top of my green. I'm going to see what happens. So I'm just going to take a little bit, pinch it off, and with my fingers, I'm just going to start spreading it out and blending it into that green. Isn't that interesting? I'm going to keep going, experimenting with this technique. You could try other colors as well. Have fun experimenting. I'd like to share another technique with you. You're going to be making snakes of clay. It's really fun. So I'm going to start off, I've pinched off a bit of clay, and I'm going to change its shape. I'm going to first start in between my hands to get it started. There we go. Sort of like the shape of a log right now. And I'm going to change it. I'm going to start rolling it out on the table. So I'm going to go from side to side. Do you notice how it's changing? It's starting to get longer, thinner and longer. So you just keep going. Be patient with this technique. It takes time, especially if you want a long, thin snake. Just keep going. was fun. I love rolling out different snakes of clay. I decided to make four. You can make as many as you would like in whatever colors you would like to use. I'd like to share with you a way you can change your snakes. It's another technique called coiling. Can you see those spirals right behind my pufferfish friend? I'm going to share with you how you can take your snakes of clay and make them look like this. It really is fun to do. I'm going to start out with this one. All right. Sometimes I like to start with my fingertips and I just start to roll it. You see here I'm starting to coil it around and then I'm just going to place it right on the background that I made earlier. Hold that down and start to wrap it around. And I'm just going to keep going, wrapping it around, pressing it to help it stick. Maybe I decide I'm going to make this one turn this direction and just place it right on top. And I'm going to keep going with my other snakes and turn them into fun coils. I'm going to practice and experiment with this technique. Have fun doing this as well.
love the coiling technique. I hope you had fun experimenting with that as well. I'd like to share with you another technique. Look carefully here, behind my pufferfish friend. Can you see those little balls? That's another technique that you can use your fingers with the clay and just roll little balls. I'm gonna use some orange. Remember, you can use whatever color or colors that you would like. Now my balls are not gonna be very large. There might be varying sizes, but they're not gonna be very large. So I'm gonna start off by just pinching off a little bit of clay. You can roll them in between your fingers. You can roll them on the palm of your hand, or you can roll them on the table. You decide what works best for you. And then just start carefully pressing them on your background. Now you might start squishing them a little bit. It's fun to experiment changing them a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna make a smaller one here, very carefully, and just scooching them in place. Now it does take a lot of patience to do this technique, but I think it's a lot of fun. All right, I'm just gonna keep going rolling out and placing different balls of clay. Might even decide to use some different colors. Have fun. Now we're going to experiment with different tools to create different textures in our clay. So far, you've seen me just use my hands and fingers as my tools. But now you can see I have many different things that I have all around the table. I'm going to share with you how these are very helpful tools with my clay. All right, so what I'm gonna do to begin with when my experimenting with these different tools is just creating sort of like little pancakes of clay. They're not gonna be too large, but just little pieces and big enough to be able to create different textures. And then you're gonna save these so you have a memory of your different textures. Let's see what I'd like to begin with. I love working with toothpicks. Let me share with you how toothpicks can be very helpful tools. And there's many different ways you can work with them. So you can use them just to make dots, little holes. You can also use this tool, I love to use it this way, to make it look very furry. So I just scratch into the clay and I just keep scratching until I feel something looks furry enough. So I just keep going. So that's another way to use this tool. You can also use this tool to sort of draw or scratch into it. So notice how I'm drawing different patterns into the clay. So that's another way you can use a toothpick. So this might be a tool that you decide to experiment with. So if it's something you want to keep, to keep experimenting on, please put it inside your baggie so it doesn't dry out. But if you have finished creating a texture with each tool, I'm actually going to invite you to save it so you can go back and look at it again. It will be wonderful reference for you when you make your final tiny clay picture. All right, let's see here. I'm going to get another pancake of clay prepared so I can try another tool out and see what textures I can create with it. So this one I did with my toothpick. Let's see here. Oh, you may have noticed I also have a straw another great tool to use. Of course, you can use it to roll if you need to help you flatten something, but I'm going to use it to help me make circles. <gasps> Do you see the circles that I'm making? So I'm just gonna spread these out here, going all around. Might fill up the surface. Maybe I overlap some. I'm gonna try that. Oh, that's interesting. Or I might spread some out. This is why it's important to experiment. 
try the different tools out that you have and see how they help you out. Now, I'm thinking something that might be interesting to add to this is another tool that I have. I have an old pen, so the ink has dried up and I use this with my clay. Watch what I'm gonna do. I have it so that that little part with the ink in it does not stick out. <gasps> Can you see that? I'm making smaller circles inside the large ones that I made with the straws. Isn't that cool? I love experimenting with different tools. All right. Now, if this is something I want to keep experimenting with, remember, I'll need to place this in my baggie. I'll let that dry out so I can look at that later. All right, let me get another piece of clay. Once again, I'm going to make another pancake so I can experiment with another texture. Now, I decided to use the same colors for all of mine, so I just see the different textures. You may decide to experiment on different colors, and that's okay. <gasps> this might really be surprising you. Why do I have this little vehicle with me? Are you ready to see what I'm going to do? Do you see the wheels? That's right. You're thinking. I'm going to roll it right over the clay. <gasps> Isn't that cool? One right next to the other. <gasps> wow, that really makes a wonderful texture. Now maybe I decide to stop there. I could, but I'm gonna see what happens if I go the other direction and go over top. <gasps> That's pretty cool. I wonder what I could use that texture for. You never know. All right, I'm gonna lift this up and I'm gonna save that one so I have a memory texture I created. All right, let me get another piece of clay. This one's not quite big enough. Punch off a little bit more. There we go. I'm just going to keep experimenting with different tools and see what happens. love experimenting with different tools to create different kinds of textures on my clay. Now I'm ready to try out those textures on my tiny clay picture experiment. Do you notice how I have it inside the bag? And so it did not dry out. It's very important. All right, I'm ready to give it a try. Let's see here. I think I'm first going to make a shape place it right on top of the clay that I spread out. And now, notice how it's smooth right now. I want to change that and add a texture. I enjoyed working with this pen. I'm going to create that texture right on top of this yellow piece. Just go all the way around. cool. I think I'm going to try another texture. Let's see. I'm also going to use another color. Mm -hmm. It's smooth again. All right, let's see. Ooh, I enjoyed the texture this bracelet made. Let me give that a try. some textures to the background layer that I spread out on that piece of cardboard. Oh, I hope you have fun continuing to experiment with your different tools and textures that you can create. And I can't wait to see you at our next studio time where I'm going to share with you how we can create a plan for our tiny clay picture. Happy experimenting and claying everyone! <laughs>